there's only one thing as developers that we have in common. We always find bugs. Developing software, it is one of the hardest things in the world and Copilot is here to help you. So let's take a look on how Copilot for free can help you even debug some errors here and there within Visual Studio. I always like to remember for everyone that Copilot for free is already available on Visual Studio. If you want to learn more, you can take a look on other videos in our channel. But basically, it empowers you to code with AI and help you to have a Copilot on your side always. You see that we talk too much about how it generates code, but we never talk too much about iteration on errors. Let's see how it can help me on an error. Here we have the classic Blazor app. This is the Blazor app you may know from using the samples we have with Visual Studio. I see nothing wrong with it, right? It seems that it's working and everything should be fine. Let's get it to run. Uh-oh, we have errors of our build. No, I don't, I don't want that. Uh, let me see. Okay, it is complaining about my weather app. Let's take a look. The thing that it doesn't contain the definition for location. Here I can click the Copilot button. I can ask it about defects. It seems like a simple error, right? I'm adding location city, which I, where I do not. And the cool thing about Copilot, it is, it is describing what the error is. What is this class? Doesn't have a location, but the code tries to access it. And it might happen because weather forecast is hacking the location property. If I zoom out a little bit, I can see the code that is trying to write to fix it. You can see that it is adding the summaries, the forecast, and it is adding a new location variable, which requires here a city get set and is getting a number of indexes for settings. Let's ask Copilot to implement it with agent mode. Implement the features described above. Copilot did some things here. It added a new location class, added the location part of the summary, and updated my tables to add the summary back again with the CD location. And updated the data initialization and then fixed the display table. And it built it to check if everything was working. Let's keep and run. And sure enough, we have everything working with our weather app including the summary and the city already displayed on our amazing app. Of course, this does not end here. This is a very simple demonstration of how it works with like very simple errors before the build compilation. But let's take a look on how it may work if I have a bug. Let's go back to our weather app and let me add here a breakpoint. Let me start once again. Let me click here on weather once again. And then we have the classic breakpoints here. One of the new good things we can do is while you are debugging, we can ask Copilot. So here we can ask Copilot about some parts on our code. So imagine that I don't know what this does. So explain what is this part do. And then it is looking at the select code and help me to understand what is happening step by step. And help me to understand how it fits in the bigger picture. And here is giving some sample code to know there's some key patterns and how it does it work. And here is giving me some suggestions on how can I modify the code. If I counter some runtime errors, I can actually do the same. I can get the error as before right here, and, and I can get the ask copilot error to fix it. Furthermore, I can go here in a variable like summaries, and you're gonna see right away, look, it's our friend copilot. And I can ask it to analyze the debugger with the expression of the summaries. And here we have our expression. So right here we have the value of the expression debugger. This is so cool, right? Because it does help us a lot in understanding how can we make it actually work. So we can actually go to the debugger and we can go and ask what this does, what does this do. Not only in the line, but even after we allocate a value to it. It, this can be very useful to understand um, what is receiving, what is getting, and how it is getting, like this step-by-step step is going. Let's just continue. Wow, our Blazor rep waited too long to get this data, right? It's finally here, and it's finally, once again, ready for everyone to see our weather app. Even with sometimes a little bit messy. 
I don't have hold calm 15 degrees chilly and 10 degrees balmy. But you know, that's a feature we can implement next. But folks, we know that not always code works as we want, right? Imagine that we have a run timer, right? Oh no, that is the worst thing that can possibly happen, right? That you're running and then it's boom, something exploded in your code and you have no idea how. Of course, we have amazing tools like IntelliSense that help you with that and our debuggers. Well, let's take a look how Copilot deals with runtime errors. Let's take a look what I did here. So here I have five items here, but oh no, look at this. It's now six. That will explode our code now. Let's take a look at how Copilot deals with this. Let me run the code and let me do the weather. Let's click continue. Boom. My index is outside the bounds of the array. We know already why, right? But we have here all the classics show call stack, details, live share session. But we have here analyze with Copilot. Let's see what Copilot has to say to us. So as you saw before, we're going to use debugger and we're going to analyze it. So you're going to pick anything we have and read our playthrough. And here you start to explain that, yes, the problem is we have like five cities, but we wanted something extra, right? So here I say, oh, to fix this, you can go enumerable to one to six, to one to five. Sure, let's do this. Or, you know, don't use like fix this. And we are using fixed, but we can actually use mobile as well. But even folks know that sometimes using size can be a little bit tricky. And let's continue here. There you go. Our code works again. If you want to learn more about generative AI, we have a ready-made guide for you to learn anything for .NET applications. You can go to aka.ms slash Gen AI net, or go to our Microsoft GitHub company account and go to Generative AI for Beginners.net, where you can see multiple lessons on how can we apply Generative AI day to day with Copilot. And thank you so much for learning a little bit with Copilot in Visual Studio. You saw how to use the debugger in multiple ways, right? Copilot is everywhere. You can go and debug a variable, you can go and click an error, or even go directly to the line of code and ask what it means. And that's amazing. And you know, we love to learn what you want to learn. So put in the comments any questions, doubts, and anything extra you want to understand a little bit more. And thank you so much for watching. See you soon.